How we doing, everyone? I've got a big smile on my face. I've just had a trim. Ten Hag. I went as close as I could get to Ten Hag. I'm not going Ten Hag style. But look, I'm waffling. I'm excited. I've just watched Manchester United absolutely dominate Spurs 2-0. In this video, I think we'll put a smile on your face. I'm going to take a look at this Ten Hag pressing system that we saw against Spurs. I didn't think we would see it to that quality for a full 90-minute game this early in the season. Ten, game, 10 Premier League games in. And I want to run through it analyze it pick some examples out and show how it worked why it worked and what we can learn from it going forward so make sure you please drop a like on these videos they do take a bit longer to do but i like doing them and i think they're quite informative and i think it's quite a core part of the channel for me but you'll remember maybe you don't this is what eric ten Hag said in his pre-match press conference ahead of the game against spurs we aim to dictate and that's been a premise of his since basically day one at manchester united but it's not been the easiest road to get there. Now we've seen against Spurs, we can do it and we are capable. Let's dive in. I'm going to start with the analysis of, of the team's shape overall, really. You can see from this, uh, from this graph here, let me get rid of that on there, just how many players that we've got in attack. We've got one, two, that was a terrible circle, three, four, five over there. We've got eight players here. We are going aggressive up against Spurs. And these overloads really helped us going forward. And here, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Creating these overloads made it difficult for Spurs to defend against us. But that's not particularly the main focus of this video because the main focus of this video is all about the actual pressing system now something i found curious during the game is well that's not what i found curious i was actually talking about this they're in the wrong order well, let me get that bad boy up here but you can see from this position this is manchester united in the build-up martinez on the ball casemiro there and look at the positions there of fred and the positions of bruno it was more of like a traditional 4-3-3 really with that triangle in between them and it allowed Casemiro to really operate as that defensive midfielder. And my, did he have a good game. Uh, the one, the, that one there, I was going to show you this one here. This is a big reason as to how we were able to nullify Harry Kane. Was uh, how aggressive Lissandro Martinez was going on Harry Kane. It made a big, big difference and it squeezed the space out for him. But this is the example, the first example I really want to run through of how good this pressing system was. And how it works so well. Take this scenario here. Spurs, they're looking pretty comfortable. I mean, they're on the edge of their own box. They've got the ball here. Uh, it's not particularly too much danger. But because of how Manchester United have pressed up here. Look at that. We've got five players there. In a very small amount of space. Spurs feel like they have no option. But to go back. And look at what Manchester United do here. Check out the arm signal there of Bruno Fernandes. What he's doing is telling Diogo Delo, get on your bike and cover, oh, my bad, get on your bike and run into this space here. Put pressure on that man there because, look, everybody is squeezing on their individuals there. Squeeze the space, squeeze the space. Bruno's going to follow his man in here and look what happens. Let's follow this through. Bruno then, he's, he's, he's on his man. Oh, Jesus. Right. I will, get this, I will get this right eventually, but, you know, I'm still learning this process. You can see that everybody is covering their man. Delo now is basically making, he's not taking that space. He's not taking that player out, but because the space there and the space there, Delo can close that down. Now, Spurs go to try and get the ball clear because they're now panicking, but they're not able to do that because Lissandro Martinez aggressively comes in and wins that header and knocks that header down there to Bruno Fernandes. Now, you might remember what happens next. Let me scroll through these. Let me get these prepared. This is quite difficult to do on your own. I need some sort of editor. Anyway, can't have that. Bruno Fernandes wins the ball here. Lovely. That's all from the header down there from, from uh, Lissandro Martinez. Again, aggression is key to this. And what happens here? Bruno Fernandes is there. He plays that ball through into the space. And look what happens. Because Manchester United have won that ball high up the pitch, Anthony is not double marked. Anthony doesn't have two defenders around him. Anthony can be dangerous. And that's where we saw the best of him. 
He went wide in this position. And this was a very, very smart ball across. Look at that. He saw the space across the Jaden Sancho there. Really intelligent ball from Anthony to Sancho. Sancho on the edge of the box. He's there. He lays it back for Fred. Fred, he's there on the edge of the box. 1-0 Manchester United. All developing from Man United being aggressive. All developing from Manchester United in, is it this position here? Nope, a little bit further back than that. This position here. Going aggressive. Bringing the team through. Everybody pressing as a unit. Forcing Spurs to clear it. Martinez being aggressive in the header. And by that, winning the ball there, we can attack Spurs when they're out of shape. Look at them running back. Any defender running with their back to goal, you've got an advantage as an attacker. We took advantage and we made it 1-0. It was brilliant. And it was all we deserved. And there's more of it as well as the game continued. This, I think, was a fantastic example of this high press. Spurs on the edge of their own box. That's a line, not a circle. Spurs on the edge of their own box. And Luke Shaw going really aggressive there on his man. He doesn't win the ball, but it doesn't matter because he might miss the tackle. But then Fred, he's now on the loose. Fred is now going to go in aggressively on his man there. But of course, the ball eludes him. The ball is passed down there. Spurs maintain possession. But it doesn't matter because who else is there but Casemiro when they eventually try to pass the ball and he just feeds it into the space there for Bruno. And Manchester United regain possession once again. And this was just a pattern which really, really repeated itself throughout that game. Take this, for example. This is Manchester United on the edge of their own box. Spurs with the ball over here. And we know what happens. The ball is swung in over there. Now, it ends up being offside. It doesn't swing in like that. That would be a hell of a cross. Um, ends up being offside. But Harry Kane, David Hay makes a save as far as he knows. And look at the build-up to this goal. That's all cut. This has nothing to do with high pressure. This is just excellent football for Manchester United. We're here with Luke Shaw passing it into Fred. Fred opens his body up, gives it to Casemiro who finds Anthony on the other wing. Anthony, he look, look look where Anthony picks up the ball. Anthony picks up the ball over there in his own half and runs with confidence into this space here. And by doing that, look where he ends up with the ball. Great position. He feeds it through to Bruno Fernandes, who the only reason he wins this ball is aggression. Otherwise, that 50-50 is being won by Spurs. Possession is lost and ultimately... Bruno Fernandes wouldn't have banged in the second goal off the back of it. Two goals and aggression was at the centre of both of them. Controlled aggression. Aggression that's not just like aggression for the sake of it. And it was just a fundamental part of our game. And I tell you what, Bruno Fernandes against Spurs was fantastic. I mean, look, look, at, look at that. In his previous nine games per 90, he's had 15 final third passes. And that was doubled to 31. He's created, on average, two shots, two chances per game. That nearly quadrupled to nine. Passing accuracy went up from 76.4 to 92%. Nearly 50% more touches. It was a brilliant, brilliant performance from Bruno. And equally so, it was a brilliant performance from Fred. And this is the aggression I was talking about. Look at that. Look at that difference in the heat map. Fred here is he's got a bit more of a deeper role when Casemiro isn't alongside him. But with Casemiro alongside him, it allows Fred to play in that aggressive press. I said it before the game. I said, look, so many of us probably wanted Fred to be dropped for that game. But if we play a high press system, it really does suit Fred. And we played the best example of the high press system that I've seen from United so far. Here's another example of it. Spurs here with the ball in their own half. And what they try and do is just feed the ball into, I think it's Son over there. Try to feed the ball into the space. But Manchester United, do not let them have any time on the ball. Let's delete that. Look, the ball comes through. Varane goes straight in with that tackle. Absolutely no time on the ball for Son there. He can't really do much on it. But it doesn't matter if he can get past him. Because who else comes in? But Casemiro. Casemiro lunges in there. I say lunges. Dives in there. Wins the ball back. Manchester United then have possession. Fred is able to turn in space with time. A lovely, delicate little pass through to Bruno Fernandes. And let's follow this attack through. Bruno, 
down here, gives it to Anthony, comes back across, patient play, patient build-up from Manchester United, ends with Bruno Fernandes spanking a shot in. We didn't score from it, but it's another example of another move created by Manchester United being aggressive and Manchester United dictating play. We dictated against Spurs and we play like an absolute team collective unit. And it's the best example we've seen of it. Total, total honestly, I'm, I, I can't remember a game like that from Manchester United for years and years. Not to that level. Not to that level. And it was all down to the collective. Every Ten Hag asked and demanded his players to dictate the play, and they did. And I hope I've showed you some examples there of how we did it and why it worked and who was important and why that aggression was so fundamental to that performance against Spurs. I really enjoy doing these videos. I'm trying to, I'm doing it all myself. Uh, I'm trying to learn how to do it on the fly. But look, make sure you drop a like on the video. Why wouldn't you? What a performance. I hope it's been a bit of an informative video. I'd like to do more of these. If you've got any other ideas, slide into my DMs on Twitter or Instagram. They're always open. But United, mm, if that's the start of something new, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next.